We got John, Upstate Brush Control. Welcome to Derby for the, oh, you've been here a few times. Yes, I think uh, my third or fourth trip. You're a frequent traveler here. Yeah, so you know. I feel bad because I haven't been over to visit you. I was thinking about that on my uh, way up here. I'm like, you know what? It's about time somebody starts driving I know. South, well, you, you get know. an 850J dozer and a DL550 with a Fecon head and a few other cool toys. Yeah. I'll start benching your way. No, in all seriousness, I do feel bad. I've, uh, uh, you're a little bit south. East of Chris? Yes, yeah. Chris uh, is on uh, <laughs> the the east coast of North Carolina. I'm on the west side, yeah, western I've, North Carolina. I went to Chris's a few times and tried to make, because basically I had to make a southern loop to, to catch you, which yep. wouldn't be too far out of the way, but it's just, oh my goodness, times and schedules yep, just I haven't, understand. <laughs> I haven't aligned. So. That, um, when you're out, you know, getting stuff, buying buses, and you I know. don't. We are not talking about the bus in the background. <laughs> that is just. Uh, I don't want to talk about John. <laughs> don't I've, been, I've been giving him a hard time about it, so. No, it's not my bus. <laughs> We're just gonna leave sure, it. Sure, sure. Oh, oh, it's, it's in your shop, though, John. All right, sorry. I'm yeah. done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, first off, a little bit for people who don't know, um, you're a YouTuber. Yes. That's how you and I met. How long have you been doing it? We started right around the same time. So, so. four going on five years. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you've had pretty good success with it as well. Yep. Uh, yep. I don't know. I found you fairly early, I believe. I think you were 16, 17,000 subscribers. Somewhere right in there when I was actually a little bit above you, you know, I, oh, think, really? I think you were in the, uh, when uh, I think you commented on one of my videos, like, oh, what kind of camera you use? And I was like, just use my phone. I'm like, who's this guy? And I'd actually seen you in one of Logger Wade's videos. Oh, boy. And uh, you guys were working on something up here. On that the was uh, Jason Appleton's claim. Jason works a lot to use my co-host on the podcast. That was his claim to fame is he was bigger than me at one time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was for about uh, a day, maybe two days, and I'm like, holy smokes, this guy is just... <coughs> <coughs> yeah, but, I, don't, uh, I don't remember how I got... It's been so long ago, and we've been friends for a couple of years now. I don't remember all the details of how I stumbled across you, but I remember somebody may have suggested you to me, and uh, I thought you were using your phone, because whenever I started off, that's all I used was yep, my phone. Yep, that's, that's how I got started. Same thing. And uh, you can do a lot with a phone. you got to yeah. get a little bit more creative, but you can get do a lot with it, so... Um, a little, I guess, tell us a little bit about yourself. You are in the primary business as forestry mulching. Correct. You do do a little bit of excavating from time to time. So, yep. um, I mean, how how'd you end up down that path? So I grew up in construction. I was born and raised right in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, my dad was a home builder. I was another famous YouTuber from that area. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Digging Live 21. Digging Live welcome, 21. Welcome he's to the he, broadcast, or Toddcast. <laughs> He's in um, Asheville, Asheville so, yeah. so he's about an hour away from me. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, born and raised there. My dad, um, he was a home builder. He went off into the hardscape world. Uh, that time I, I was building fences actually, um, self-employed. I, I started out working four years for a guy and then I went out on my own four years. 2008 hit and then uh, me and my dad went back together doing construction. And uh, long story short, I was just, he wanted me to go, you know, keep pursuing, you know, get my builder's license, keep going down that road. I wasn't burned out with it, but I wanted something different. And I uh, came across a YouTube video of forestry mulching. I saw it, I said, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And uh, I started looking into it, researching, and I knew a guy down in the Columbia area who had one, and I saw it, and I was like, that's it, that's what I wanna do. So it took about two to three years for me to, you know, I, I researched and uh, found out everything I could about it, you know, pumps and heads and machines and all this kind of stuff. And then my brother, who's in hardscapes, he needed a, uh, he does interlocking paver driveways. So he needed a, uh, another tracked skid steer. So we split a T300 together, Bobcat T300, with about 3,500 hours, it was a piece of junk. Yep. <laughs> well, well used. Well, well used. I so, had an orange one like that one yeah. time. <laughs> so we spent a lot of time working on it. In the meantime, I was renting and and uh, you know just just to get the business going. I was still working with my dad, and then uh, yeah, just kind of worked my way up. I went slow. I took everything very slow. Didn't rush into buying anything. I bought a head first kept renting a machine 
until I was established enough to like, okay, I can justify, let's say justify well, $100,000, you, right. you know. Well, I don't want to get too far off base on this podcast, but I think you bring up um, an, an awesome point. And everybody, I'm sure you get the same thing too, being on YouTube, everybody wants business advice. Like, how do I get started? How yeah. do I get here? How do I do that? Yeah. And I personally, I'm curious of your opinion on this. I personally think everybody falls into the look at me problem. <laughs> and the first thing they want to do is go out and buy the biggest, the, ba- the biggest, the best, the newest, the shiniest, yep. all that stuff. And unfortunately, they don't have enough knowledge to know what they even need. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My theory on it has always been, I think I need this. I'm going to go find something ridiculously affordable. Uh, I'm going to use a low boy trailer for an example. Like, I think I need a detached, this non-ground bearing with paper ramps on it, air ride, et cetera. Yeah. That's what I think I need. Let me go find something close that's affordable. I'm going to run this thing for two or three years. After two or three years, I know exactly what I need because yep. now I've gained experience with that. I'm sure a mulcher and a bobcat or a skid steer or a CTL is all the same thing. So if you're wanting to go down the mulching route, um, for example, I think the first thing you want to do or don't want to do is go out and spend $300,000 on a setup because you really it's- don't know... It's very easy to do. I've seen guys that have done it. They've been down that road and they've, they've actually had to cut back and, you know, sell stuff. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff you don't think about whenever you're getting into it. Um, you know, if you pull anything over 10,000 pounds, you have to have a CDL. I didn't think about that, you right. know, like, oh, I got a big truck. It can pull whatever, you know. Wait till that first can, officer, officer Hoover, Hoover. Pulls, you over, pulls you over and then, <laughs> you know, just... And then that throws you into commercial insurance, and that throws yep, you into yep. this and that. And Just a lot of things that you learn as you grow, but there was nobody out there that I could lean on, like, hey, how do I do it this way? So a lot of it I figured out by my, my myself. And Now, to that point, and nobody out there you can lean on, it is definitely, if you've got a mentor or somebody you can latch on that's willing to share information with you, that is priceless. But... There's some lessons you just got to learn. Oh, yeah, life. for sure. For sure. You know, you can you can tell somebody don't buy this, don't buy this. But they are set on buying that machine or whatever. And they're going to figure it out real quick. <laughs> just let them go. <laughs> yep, yep. Just let them go. So yep. uh, so back to our original conversation, you um, you I guess you said you've seen Forrest and you're mulching on YouTube. Yep. Thought it was cool. Yeah. Started having some success with mulching. Mm hmm. Uh, which is still today the primary business, yes, correct? Yes, primary business is still forestry mulching. Um, now, I'm going to go off in the weeds here a little bit again, but in our area where I'm at, forestry mulching is not very common at all. Mm-hmm. Pretty much the only people you see doing forestry mulching is, is a lot of right-of-way guys and some one-off subdivision work. Yep. Um, of course, we have very relaxed burn laws. We have very relaxed uh, habitat laws as far as what we can do with brush and a lot of farm ground stuff. Uh, I don't know exactly for sure where it's at, where you're at, but there's a lot of states and a lot of areas where mulching is pretty much your only option. Um, We're not quite to that point, but we do have a lot of uh, kind of absurd burn, burning things. You can't have a fire within a thousand feet of a road. So, I mean, a substantial fire. I mean, you can have a campfire, but right, you know, right. you you can't go and you know clear a lot off and expect to burn all the debris right there. Yeah, we'll light her up right, <laughs> on the, right on the white line. Let's go, yeah. boys. <laughs> I wish we could. So many times, I'm like, how does he get away with it? How do they get away with that? Like, but anyways. So this and, last big fire we have that's coming up on YouTube. I think it's gonna be my video I'll post tomorrow, which it's not gonna correspond with this date. Is we had the biggest fire I've ever had in my life. It was right in the middle of a burn ban. <laughs> <laughs> it rained the night before where they haven't officially lifted the burn ban. But it was good. Yeah, well, was well we just, of course, the, 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 the uh, county uh, fire chief lives just down the road. He stops by one day. He said, you know, we've got a burn ban. I said, you know, it rained last night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're like in the middle of a 400 acre field, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But anyways. Yeah, so the, um, a lot of what we do is, say you have a, our average customer is they have anywhere from an acre to three acres is kind of our average they have a little bit of woods um, they either have or they know somebody that has a small tractor Um, and the area got away from them it got too thick or it's something they can't do with their tractor so we will come in and cut the brush back and a lot of what we do is beautifying you know open up for views Um, we do 
most of what we do now, it, that's, that is what it is. But in the past, you know, we, we cut anything from uh, shooting lanes for hunters to, you know, open up walking paths, all kinds of stuff. So, so mulching is good for a lot of things. Yes. Um, you just named a few of them. Yep. You know, if, if they just want to maintain it and keep it knocked down with a brush hog or something. Yep. The mulching is also not good for a lot of it things. It is definitely not good. And <laughs> number one on my list is converting overgrown ground to farmland. Yep. Can't do it. You cannot do it. I, I just posted a bunch of videos. You actually helped me on a job. We what was it three and a half, four acres. We oh yeah, yeah. Three, we pushed it off. Yeah. And everybody's like, just mulch it, just mulch it. I'm like, I go in there and mulch that. If Farmer Chris comes through with his three hundred thousand dollar planter and hits one of these stumps that got left behind. Yeah. Or something. I'm in trouble. Yeah. Because the mulching, um, for the most part, especially with what you do, only takes it down to surface level. Yep. There's a lot more of that tree still underneath the ground. Exactly. The, and the tree system is still alive. You know, your root, your root base and your stump is still alive. You just showed a video um, on re-sprout. Yeah. Re-sprout yeah. stump. You know, that's, that's from someone cutting that and then it keeps Which on growing. Which would be similar or comparable to mulching. It? Exactly. Same thing. Um, so, you know, you still have your root system in the ground, so you cannot mulch. You can, but you have to deal with it down the road in a driveway, yard, a field where a house site is going to be. You could do it on the outskirts, but you can mulch it, but you have to do something with that material. You have to push it off, put it in a hole, and it creates, it's actually like doing the job twice. Right. I mean, you know from excavating, it's a lot easier to grab a tree 10 feet up, rip it out of the well, ground. Well, yeah, and then I'm, I'm, the tree is a connection to the root system. I can yank it all out of the ground at once versus going around scratching around the Trying dirt. to find the stumps. And then and inevitably, if the tree's sticking out of the ground, it's a flag. Hey, I'm over here. Exactly. Stumps, you're like, especially if you get out there scooting around the dozer, you start dragging debris over them, they disappear really quick. Exactly. And then uh, Farmer Chris finds them and <laughs> Farmer Chris ain't happy. Because <laughs> he tore up an expensive piece of equipment. So, oh, man. Um, uh, you know, everything has its place, um, and I guess I'm poking a little bit of fun at some YouTube expert commenters that, and, and a lot of times people, I don't want to pick on them because they, they legitimately don't know. Mm -hmm. They see you mulching and see how good it looks on camera, and they see me over there playing in the mud, plucking trees out, thinking, what's this idiot doing? Yeah. But there is a rhyme or a reason to why we do what we can do. One, yep. we're possibly allowed where you're not, and two, what's the purpose of the land going to be yep. after we're all all said and done so when a customer calls me i'll usually one of the first questions i'll ask is what are you what are we doing this for what is what is your end goal for this right. are you gonna have is it gonna be yard is it gonna be is it gonna be a natural area then mulch it mulch it all day long it's it's fast it's you know you get results right away you don't have to deal with the, any erosion problems reseeding right you know it has ground cover there's no permits required in my area at least uh, mulching is probably one of the things that's probably, I don't want to say it's the least regulated, but it's considered to be good for the environment because you're leaving a lot of cover and yeah. you're leaving the yeah. organic matter behind. So um, I would say it's probably one of the least regulated excavating things to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do. Uh, at one point, we've done a lot of retention ponds and they actually like it. They like the mulch put back up on the hillsides and, you know, you know that mulch back down to create cover. Do you still have your VIN track? No, they oh, took it back. Yeah. I could have bought it, but... Uh, <laughs> I always call them the little monster trucks. They, they uh... I saw, um... Oh, what's his name? Tractor Time with Tim? No, the, um... Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Matt? Yes, yeah. Diesel Creek, he got yeah. one. Yeah. I guess he got a pretty good deal on that. Yeah, he got a little diesel one. One of the yeah. older ones. I think it's yeah. got the turbo on it before the government got involved with the emissions. Yeah, that's a nice little it, unit there. It's a good one. It's yeah. a good one for sure, so... Um, so as I, I'm assuming as the big business progressed down the road, I mean, at some point you decided to pick up a camera and start sharing this with the world. So what I was actually doing is I would sell, I would tell people, customers like, Hey, I'm going to forestry mulch that like what in the world is forestry mulching? So I go back to YouTube and show them a picture of a similar machine and a similar cutter head that I have. I said, this is what it does. This is how it works. And this is what it's going to look like. I'm like, okay, so that's kind of how I would show my customers. And then my wife says, why don't we just video, take videos with your phone and we'll put it up on YouTube and then we, you can show people that. So your, your actual work. Our actual work. And it was, it was uh, just a, a thing for 
showing customers a before and after picture. Sa sales tool. Exactly. That's all it was. And here I am now. So. You, you had no intentions <laughs> of becoming YouTube famous? No, no, absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, there was no way. I mean, I, I was just using it for showing customers and it was kind of there. I didn't, I didn't know about like, you can make money off of it. You can we have sponsorship. We don't make any gym money. Gym. No, we, no, we, no. We, there's no money to be had in this business. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie in case you people are wondering. Uh, so obviously this m morphed in to more than just a, a way to advertise. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming you made these videos public and they started catching some traction with yeah. people that weren't your customers and um on down the, on down the line and we were talking here in the beginning of the podcast we've been doing it about the same time what oh man forgive me you seventy five thousand ish on subscribers yeah right under right yeah. under so you're yeah. i mean that's that's good i'm a, very happy with that yeah that's very, a pretty very big, blessed yes I that's mean, a pretty big number yeah. um pretty big number and you know i always give everybody everybody wants advice on starting a channel i encourage anybody to do it because it's easy free and cheap to do it like yeah. me and you both got started with our phones but yeah if you're going to do youtube you can't post two videos and make a decision on whether it's for you or not <laughs> i mean legitimately you need to do it for a year yeah, yeah. Uh, and you're going to get discouraged at times and most likely in the beginning but if you do it for a year and stick with and it I, I think you'll know at the end of the year whether you're for your t youtube or youtube's for you however you want to mm -hmm. say it um, and there's a lot of good things that come out of YouTube. I mean, I, I, I feel like from my perspective of, of watching you, I feel like you put in a lot more into YouTube than I do and it's paying off. Apparently for you. I'm just a better actor because I don't, I feel like you do. You do, you do a lot more of the, the podcast. I haven't even picked up a camera the whole day. <laughs> this is true, but <laughs> I mean, you've been recording since you got here. I didn't touch my camera. It wasn't that long. But, <laughs> um, I feel like whatever you, you, you put into YouTube, you will, it will pay off. Not yeah, it's, it's just like anything, whether it's, uh, I mean, we can compare this to a marriage, your business, yeah, or YouTube. Yeah. You get into it, what you put out of it. Yeah. Um, the second piece of advice I'd give to anybody on YouTube, and I, and I personally take this as a compliment, and, and if you think I'm wrong, jump in here and correct me. I don't care. You're not going to hurt my feelings, but what you see on YouTube is us. Like, oh, absolutely. We don't, <laughs> we don't make stuff up. Me and Aaron bickering, and you've been around me and Aaron off camera. It's no <laughs> different than what's on camera. He's just a shortened person. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always tell everybody I'm not smart enough to be an actor. Like, we are legit. Like, yeah. that is us. We don't make stuff up. We don't create drama. It, it is what it is. If I screw up, I may not tell you all about it, but I'll tell you about it. Yeah. yeah. You know, within reason, we got to keep the videos, but it's. It's um, true reality TV. Yeah. Is it, would that be a good way to yeah. put it? Um, I remember whenever uh, Wade was uh, on Axemen and uh, talking to some of the producers and stuff, and this was several years ago, I guess about four years ago, uh, they, they straight up told us that, you know, YouTube's their biggest competition now because it is true. Really? It is true reality TV. Yeah. And they, they recognized that, and they were trying to, Hmm. Make it a little bit more of a serious show, which I think kind of hurt him in the end because they almost went too serious with the with the last uh, season Wade was on. But um, I I think it's if you're going to be on YouTube, you need to be truthful and transparent as possible. Yeah. About what's going on. I mean, obviously we can't share every little detail about our business. You know, a lot of people want to know what our bids are. <laughs> I don't look at that bid number as my number. I, I feel like that number belongs to the customer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's, uh, so that's a I personal. Don't, I don't share it because I'm particularly afraid of my competition knowing, or I'm particularly afraid of anybody else knowing. That's their no. If, if that customer wants to come on there and tell everybody what they paid for my services, that's their money, their, their business. But mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not for me to share that. It's kind of the way I look at it. That's a, that's a little bit more of a personal side of the business. Um, I don't... Uh, air my p and l and how much money I make or don't make, but I kind of uh give generic synopsises of what's going on and mm -hmm. what's profitable and what's not and why it was profitable and why it wasn't but uh <laughs> it's always depressing <laughs> yeah but it's hard to um it's hard to share it's hard to be hundred percent transparent with that but as yeah. far as how the job's going did it go as planned did it not go as planned? You know, how did I bid it versus how did it turn out? You know, Matt does a lot of my bidding and he's got some stuff posted on his channel. 
about going through that. I, I try to share as much as I can, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. um, and I think people appreciate that, being able to kind of be, kind of know what's going on from all different aspects. Yeah. And I think you've got kind of similar thoughts about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I um, mean, probably my number one question is how much did that cost? How much? <laughs> my number one comment is probably that, yeah. I'd say it's in the top 10 for sure. You know, like yeah. how, what, what was the cost of that? And then people will chime in and like, he won't give out the price on it. I'm like, man, that's a tough one. It really yeah. is. I know there's other YouTubers out there that'll tell you every penny, of every job of what they charge. And I'm, I'm, I think I like to, sh to share my videos for one education on on how to, I'm not a, I'm not the expert by any means on, on anything, <laughs> mulching, grading, or anything like that. But from what I have learned, this is this is the best how I know to do it, and I'm sharing that. So whether it be mulching or, or you know, going into a project and, uh, where am I going with this? I don't know. Just well, so. Uh... I'm going to take over here for a second. Let me know if I get too far off. But I've kind of, uh, one of my big things is, and I've been very vocal about this, is, is YouTube's going to be a hobby for me. Okay. Um, which is sounds crazy because, honestly, I will tell you this. I make more money off social media than what I do in the excavating business, and I do very well in the excavating business. But YouTube is a hobby for me. Mm -hmm. I can control 100% how much money I do or don't make in the excavating business. I have zero control <laughs> over how much money I do or don't make in social media world. Yeah. Um, I got multiple sources of income from the social media world now between sponsorships and different things, but all of that could go away tomorrow yep. without, without my control. Yep. So that's why I continue to do what I do because one, I need content, and two, I enjoy it, and three, I got control over it. So I don't, I don't ever, I'm never going to quit excavating, I'm never going to do this, I'm going to keep YouTube um, as a hobby. Now, going a step forward to what I'm thinking you're trying to say is it has to be uh, fun and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I think people, people may show up on your video to watch you forestry mulch because they're looking to do forestry mulching. Mm -hmm. They keep coming back and watching video after video after video because they like you. Okay. So I, I feel like, you know, I said I'm not an actor, but we're the talent, we're the entertainment, we're the, we're the people that no matter what we're doing that day, they want to see what we're up to. Yeah. So yeah. if they watch me for a while, where I'm pulling a boat out of the river, mulching a tree up, building the lake in, they get invested in you and what you're doing. So you got to build that relationship with them through a camera yeah. to where they're intrigued about what you've got going on. Uh, there's a channel called Cowboy Car Crush, and I think he summed it up best in one comment he got. He said, I showed up for the car crush and I stayed for the cowboy. You know, and that's... Um, I know, we, I know you and I have no intentions of being in the entertainment business, nor do we intend to be in the entertainment business, but that's what keeps our audience engaged mm -hmm. about what's, what's going on. That's my thought on it. Uh, you're more welcome to speak on that. No, I think where I was going is I, I try to, I just try to enlighten people on what, like, like what we were talking about, when to mulch, when not to mulch, right. you know, stuff like that. That's all I was going to say, really. But. Yeah, and there's... Uh, there's a lot of truth to that too. You know, uh, I always try to, one of the comments I used to get a lot of times is you show up for a three hour job and you charge them a minimum and it's a thousand dollars just for a generic. Mm -hmm. Well, you're only here for three hours. Well, I try to show them my videos. Listen, I got a truck to maintain. I got plates to play. I got insurance. <laughs> I got a driver. Tires. I spent two and a half hours <laughs> trying to get loaded up just to get here. Yeah. Like you may have only seen me on your job for three hours, but this job took me a day yeah. to, to get there. And then, and they don't understand that. They don't see everything else I did. So if you can video that and kind of explain, here's what it takes to make this happen, then a lot of times they have no issue with it. You know, and that goes back to your point of kind of educating, yeah, educating people, educating yep. the people a little bit. So, um, I mean, overall, would you rate your uh, experience on social media, YouTube in particular, as, as a positive? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I've. I met so many people, had so many opportunities, got to share with people, you know, I, I have a heart for mission work um, with my church, you know, trips to Alaska, California, stuff like that. That's just a couple of the videos we've done. Um, and that's, that's, that's really me, you know, I'm sh showing part of who I am and 
what I like to do. But um, yeah, absolutely, 100%. I've um, always said one of the things YouTube does better than anything else is it does a very good job of aligning like-minded people. Yeah. Because they know your watch history. They got a lot of data on you yeah. and they know who other people match with you yeah. and, and who's in there. And uh, I think that's how we've stumbled across each other. And, and some of my best friends today are, are guys that I've met on YouTube, whether they live close or far away or however you want to put it. Uh, YouTube does a really good job of that. And um, I never started my YouTube channel. I, it sounds like you didn't either with the intentions of getting rich or famous. <laughs> like that was the farthest thing. No, no farthest no. thing from, nope. um, and I'm I'm still to this day neither one of those. Just for record, <laughs> but like um, I think that also helps the channels be successful, is doing them for the right reasons, which is yep. educating people, being proud of your what you do, um, your quality of work, and your yep. work and craftsmanship, and, yep. and so on and so forth. We get a we get a ton of work through YouTube. You know, people in our area that say, you know, like, hey, we've gotten other bids and we've seen your work and we want to use you because we've, we, we feel like we know you. Right. You know, and we've seen what you can do and how you do it and how you work. Right. We want to hire you. And, and you had no idea you are even making an impression on that person. Yeah. You are doing that job. You are yeah. just doing what you do every day. Exactly. Yep. And, and I've uh, been very fortunate as well. We've had a lot of similar experiences. You know, I, um, I like to think we do a, a nice job and the, and the bid usually re- resembles that but um, they know what they're going to expect when we show up yeah uh, and i like to think we don't disappoint on that because we treat everybody pretty much the same but uh for me i never did youtube for advertising it was just i needed something to fill some time because i shut down a business and mm-hmm. my crazy neighbor talked me into it <laughs> uh, so advertising was like the last thing on my mind to get out of yeah. youtube but uh surprisingly we had a guy one time was like in Arkansas, seen one of my videos and just happened to own property right down the road from us. And, That's crazy. <laughs> and they ended up building a big old lake farm and doing nice. a bunch of work for him. And, and like he was perfectly fine doing it remote because he knew we were going to video it. He'd and see he'd it then. Watch it. He knew the quality of work we were going to do. That's awesome. Um, and then uh, even locally, uh, we get... Um, get a lot of work uh, through YouTube, which really surprises me uh, because that was never my intention. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't mine either. It's just now that we have it, it's it's great, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, and then the, me and Matt Parr were having this conversation the other day. You know, all these companies are going to uh, digital marketing. That's one of the largest growing areas in marketing. And, uh, I mean, we kind of get that for free because we've created it for ourselves, <laughs> which is which is crazy yeah. which is which is also why we get sponsorship deals that's what it is is yeah. digital digital marketing so yeah. um how do, i mean i ask everybody this and i'm just kind of curious so there's a, so much good that comes out of youtube and social media whether it be the opportunities the people you meet uh, the products you get to test like what we did today mm-hmm. etc but there's there's always the negative um whether it be the comments or the drama or however you want to put it so uh, I mean, what's your take on the not so pretty side of YouTube, whether it be comments or um, people calling you a sellout or, or however you look at it? I really don't know of any negatives. Honestly, I mean, I'm not not one thing stands out. I feel like we had a and I wouldn't say it was a bad experience with a one of sponsorships. Hey, I would call my it. big sponsor. You go easy. It, it, what, out. Okay, we were we were sponsored through Ned Equipment, and um, which they are a Hyundai dealer. Mike actually hooked me up. <laughs> That's me. I'm guilty of the bad experience. Yeah. This guy so here. It, it's it wasn't a bad experience. It was a learning experience. I learned so much through that. The, yeah. the well, you called me one day and you were pretty distraught, and the, and then you told me what they were asking you to do. And, and that's was, that's not me. And that's that was the thing. Yeah. And and what was my exact response to you? There ain't no way in hell I'd do that. <laughs> yeah. So it, it they wanted what they wanted was, you know, uh say this about the machine. Every video I did pretty much had to be uh X, Y, and Z and so much of the video or so much of the excavator in the in the video. And if I didn't highlight the excavator, I would get basically a little slap on the wrist like hey what's going on why didn't you we didn't we didn't hear this we didn't hear net equipment enough we didn't hear what the model and machine was 
And every day I'm, I'm not going to go in a video and be like, this is the, you know, that's just not me. And I told the guy that, that I was working with, I Corey. said, yeah, <laughs> I told Corey, I said, that's not me. I said, you, you had the wrong guy. I told him, I straight up told him after we had the machine, he says, no, 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 we'll get through this. We'll get through this. And, uh, it was putting, I wouldn't say that was probably the, it YouTube wasn't fun. Right. For me. And it, it took that away. They took, I said they, it kind of took it away. I was like, this isn't fun anymore. I don't want a video today. Why is that? And I kind of. Because it's not you. It's not your video. Exactly. It's not reality. Yeah. It's not organic. Yeah. It don't, it's worthless. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't, I don't want to jump in here and cut you off, but I just want to clarify a few things. So um, you had a sponsorship opportunity through with Hyundai. Mm-hmm in a partnership with a dealer. Yes, correct, correct. Um, my relationships with Hyundai are not dealer involved. They are directly with corporate. Directly so with um, a little bit of a different scenario. Now the dealer you're talking of is, is one of their larger dealers. And, and honestly, in a lot of ways, they're a very good. Oh, they're a great, great they're organization. Great, great company, yeah. Um, but what I wanna highlight here a little bit, and I'm gonna transition into this, and this is one of the questions I wanna ask you is dealing with sponsors. You know, um, I am very adamant and very anal about what I will and will not do. Mm -hmm. um, and whenever you tell me, basically, in, in so many words, they want to put words in your mouth, I'm out. Yeah. You can fly a kite. <laughs> and I'm not doing it. You're not paying me to say words. You're not paying me to put an opinion in my mouth. You're not paying me to do any of that stuff. I don't yeah. care what you give me or what you want to do. I had another major manufacturer come to me that, that wanted to do that. I'm like, no, uh, not happening. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so what I would like, I'm just going to call him out, Corey, because I know Corey as well. Corey's a good guy. Corey yeah. has the best of intentions. Like Corey's doing what well, he he's thinks, doing his job. He's doing his he's job. Exactly. He's doing his job. So yep. I don't want to. I don't want to come across as like I'm bashing on Corey because I'm not. But it, whenever Corey requests all that stuff, he's not going to get what he wants in return. Because at that point, the world knows you're a puppet. <laughs> and a lot of people call me out on and, it. And you got yeah. sla uh, slammed on your channel for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I felt bad for you, and you were way nicer to Corey than I ever would have been. <laughs> way nicer. <laughs> if he come to me with those requests, yeah. I don't know if he would have got a call back or a second chance. It, and, and, and you're a professional, I'm professional. Neither one of us would have ever took this stuff to YouTube or come out public with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't want to be completely down on Corey and Ned because they had the best of intentions. Like yep. they weren't purposely trying to create this issue. Uh, what I want to do with this podcast is tar tell our side of the story. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do is, is to tell the other side of the story. Yeah. Um, I'll give another example is speed binders. Okay. Uh, kind of similar to what you're talking about. Uh, there used to be a guy by the name of Steve. He owns speed binders. He came to me as actually my very first sponsorship deal. He, he emailed me. Very first sponsorship <laughs> deal with speed. With, very first substantial sponsorship deal with Steve with speed binders. And I mean, that, that kind of holds a special place. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. hey, I'm on the radar. Yada, yeah. Yada, yada. Yeah. And I got to be good friends with Steve. Steve was a great guy. He supported me. He supported the channel. He was open to ideas. He let me do whatever I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, use my binders. Hey, here's some talking points. If they fit into what you're doing, great. Yada, yada, yada. Steve sells the company, Crosley Group. And okay, sounds good. I'll work with these guys, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hey, let's figure something out. Well, now it's got to be formal. It's got to be on paper. Okay, that's fine. So they send me a contract. I'm not going to go through all the details, but some of the things in there, they wanted three trucking videos a month. They wanted so many mentions, this, that, and the other. Listen, guys. I don't wake up in the morning and say, damn, I need a speed binder video. I'm going to go trucking today. No, I wake up in the morning and go do what needs to be done yep. that day, and I video it. Yep. yep. You know what I mean? That's what happens. Um, Hyundai, Volvo, they send me an excavator. They may sit for a week or two because yeah. I don't need them. I'm not yeah. going to go out and use them because I need them. Yeah. But whenever I do need them, I'll go use their excavator instead of mine. Yeah. And that's organically. I get... Um, a guy the other day emailed me about using trailer lights. He wanted to give me trailer lights. I'm going to make a video about them. I don't need trailer lights. I'm never going to make a video about trailer lights. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. But I'm giving you the lights. I don't care. I don't need them. <laughs> you know what I mean? They work fine. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're, they're good now. I'm not. Uh, so, um, 
uh, very, 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 very selective. Mm -hmm. If it's something that you want me to promote that I believe in, I will not promote anything I don't believe in. Mm -hmm. And it's something like a speed binder. Mm -hmm. If I can go grab your binder instead of mine, because either way I'm using a binder that day, uh, I'll do it. I'll be honest with you. When I first started using speed binders, I thought they were going to be a gimmick that I never use. Five years later, I'm still using them. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's my relationship. My relationship with Hyundai is very open like that. Every time they send me a machine, they just uh, they just tell me to be honest. Um, you got to experience the case today. Obviously, this case thing did not go the way we wanted it to go. <laughs> um, and as long as they're working on it and trying to figure it out, yeah, yeah, I have no no problem with yeah. it whatsoever. Uh, I know you've had some other relationships, and you're more welcome to uh, yeah uh, share some stories. But again, if you're going to be in YouTube, some of these guys chase every single opportunity that comes through their email. <laughs> And I don't think it's beneficial to them. No, no. I people mean, know when you're trying to sell and people know when you're trying to be authentic. Yeah. I mean, I, I had Fecon approach me. Um, they said they, they watched me for over two years before they made the decision to sponsor us. And that was a, that was a huge sponsorship. You know, I mean, they dropped off, I think, the first, the first set of heads that we had, you know, three different heads, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff that they, there you go, try it out, see what you think, you know, give us, give us your honest opinion about it. And, um, Fecons, we are not sponsored by them now just due to their marketing strategies have changed. Um, and personnel. And yes, yes. One of the main guys that was with them who sought me out, he, uh, he has left the company now. So, but yeah, even through Ventrac, they, they watched me for a long time. And, you know, both Ventrac and Fecom were like, do you? Like, I wouldn't hear from them for three months. You know, whenever they called me, I was like, oh, no, I did something wrong. <laughs> like, what what did I do? Did I? <laughs> Going like, back to the video? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, maybe man, it was what? the mud hole. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the first one. Oh, man. That was rough. Uh, uh, so, Jody, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Come and help me get the... Oh man, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually do have another possibility of a spo another po sponsorship coming up. It is another Cutterhead company. I'm not going to share who it is yet. Um, we're going to be talking about it at Con Expo. I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm talking with them. When I was with Vcon, they approached me, and I couldn't do anything right. when I was with them. So it's it's a company that I've always been very interested in. Uh, it's a very good company. Top three top four, whatever, as far as cutter heads. So uh, just found out this week. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah, very exciting. And, and I mean, from our side of stuff, we do get excited about it too. I mean, yeah. without my connections, I mean, let's face the facts. I've got a DL 550, one of four in existence <laughs> in my possession, which is insane. That never yeah. would have happened without YouTube and all the awesome yep. people to watch. Yep. Um, you probably won't see until after this post, but I had a brand new Volvo 200. Uh, I've knocked the paint off more new excavators in the last <laughs> year than I have my whole entire life, which is just uh, absolutely insane. But uh, I'm, and I think you are as well. I'm very particular about who I align with. Um, Hyundai, Volvo, and Case are my three big ones. Mm -hmm. um, they've all been a pleasure to work with. Yeah. Um, Hyundai and Case don't even require any it's a handshake deal. They just nice. trust me to be responsible and, yep. and stuff. Uh, Volvo's a little bit different without going into too much details, but it's, it's manageable. I have no, no issues with it whatsoever. I uh, work with AMI and WorkBrow and I am, I work for competitors, right? So like AMI and WorkBrow are both attachment companies, <laughs> but I'm just a hundred percent honest with both of them. Yeah. Uh, the same way with uh, Volvo calls the other one, the H company. Um, I'm, I'm just like, listen, guys, I'm not trying to play one against the other. Yeah. I just want to be open and honest about what I'm doing over here and what I'm doing over here. Yeah. I don't cross any information over that be proprietary to one or the other. Um, just try to be fair with everybody and, and, and do a good job, professional job to represent them and still give my honest opinion on what it is, whether yeah. it be a pyre rake or... AMI right now, they come down and pick my ruckus rake up and took it back, but it's, it's held hostage in candy. They want to tear it down and re-engineer it. And, and, you know, <laughs> but that's great, though. That's, it that, is. That's awesome. That's, but, that's... You know, I don't... Whenever I bought the ruckus rake, there's one main pin up there. 
I said, guys, I'll buy the rake, but I'm concerned about this pin. Yeah. I said, I don't think it's heavy enough. I think it's going to be an issue. A year later, I sent him a picture of the rake broke completely in two. Pins broke. Yeah. They told me there, I bought it. You buy that and you have any problems, you let me know. Oh, don't you worry. I will. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, rake broke completely in two. Sent him a picture. I'll send it up here. We'll fix it. Well, I got to get the job done. So, I welded it up, patched it up, and got it going. Uh, but as soon as I did, they're like, as soon as you get the job done, you can do it without it. I want you to send it up here. We're going to go through the whole rake. I have some other small stuff that I'd like to see tweaked, fixed, and uh, figure it out. I don't, everything's going to have problems. It's whether or not you're willing to fix them. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care what piece of equipment you buy, what brand it is, it's going to have an issue. Yeah. So are we willing to put a Band-Aid on it or fix it? Yeah. And that's my thing, and these guys are willing to fix it. Yeah. Um, I, I want to go back to the case thing today, but I mean... They're fixing it. They're, They're working, working on it. it. They're I mean, working on it. The guys are calling, you know, I think he was talking to two different engineers in two different states, wasn't he? Yeah. And that is, that's not just an engineer. That is the engineer. Okay. You know, they're the guys that built the machine from the ground up. They know it better than anybody. And yeah. I can't ask no more out of them. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. I can't ask no more out of them. So uh, hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of an insight into sponsorship deals and i hope anybody i mean i like Corey. Corey's a good guy i've dealt with the guys at ned <laughs> i'm not giving them personally a hard no. time i'm just trying to let them understand from our side like if you want if you want somebody to read and and recite specs and model numbers and stuff then do it yourself and post it on your own channel yeah that's not what we do on a daily yeah. basis we get in the seat and go to work yeah and hopefully the machine's not the storyline <laughs> you know that's that's our goal yeah uh you, you say that but it also um the video that helped me like jump into youtube like that made that pushed me you know right, everybody's got the one video yeah that took off. yeah and it was um my asv rt120 i did a walk around video of it it was just a it was just a walk around video. But and nothing in that video was prompted by SV. It no, was no, it was, the, it was my personal opinion. It was you doing, your, exactly, yep. you talking, not. Yep. I don't care how good an actor you are. If ASV gave you a cue card and said you had to say certain things walking around that thing, <laughs> I could pick them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that. Yep. And people watching can too. Yeah. They know whenever you've been told to say something or you're yep. told to mention something. And, yep. Uh, I, I think the organic placement of those products in a video and just let the piece of equipment speak for itself, mm -hmm. doing the job it's intended an engineer to do is way more beneficial than anything we can do or say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have this conversation with uh, Volvo a little bit and, uh, you know, they want to take us up to Shippingsburg, which is an amazing facility. Uh, but people want to see it on the job site, a real life scenario, which is what they've started to do with Chris and I a little bit. And I think they'll see some huge benefits of that. I hope, mm -hmm. I hope they do anyways. But um, everybody's got to test the waters and do stuff at their own, their own rate. And mm -hmm. everybody's got a different way to approach stuff, which is also what makes everybody interesting and, and different. So Yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't even know. Do you have a relationship with ASV? Um, they help me out with parts. Okay. So, um, I know, I know you've uh, been very impressed with those machines. Yes. From very, the mulching. Very impressed. As to this day, I've still not driven a machine that can compete with an ASV. As far as the cooling package. We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the cooling package, the ride, um, the flow. Um, I had two RT120s at one time. I ended up selling one to, um, I dig it for. Yeah, yeah. If you guys haven't seen, oh man, I dig it for. Devin's his name, isn't it? Yeah, Davin. He Davin. He does these parody videos. He used to do them around Christmas time. I actually texted him. I was telling him I was disappointed. I didn't see one this year. I wasn't. <laughs> I don't know. He's had uh, Matt, you, uh, Chris, Chris, Captain. I think Logger Wade's in Logger Wade, yeah. me. And uh, they're pretty funny. They are. They they're are. pretty funny. But he makes me sound like I'm some special, you know, like. <laughs> every, you guys got to go watch the video. But every, 
every time John. <laughs> then, that's all. That's all I say in the then, video, John. And then, they're like, we know, we know your name. <laughs> and then the, they kept going to uh, Chris, and he's like Volvo, and he's like, I know you're sponsored by Volvo. I get it. <laughs> it's uh, he's that, a cool dude. I've met him in person a handful of times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got his YouTube channel does pretty good. Yeah, it's well. really good. And he'll be. Uh, He'll be in Vegas, but uh, yeah, I was. Uh, you were the star of the show when you weren't even there. <laughs> oh man, it it was pretty good. So <coughs> I did have a uh, 135 that I ended up selling an ASVRT one 135. Um, well, I'm sure we'll get into this, but before, right after my guys all quit, so I I ended up selling that uh, due to. Didn't need it. Right. Yeah. That's, a, <laughs> that's an expensive piece of equipment yeah. to be sitting there just in, yep. just in case you need it. So, well, we kind of covered the YouTube realm there a little bit and you kind of gave us a leader into it. So being a, being a small business owner, mm -hmm. uh, I always say that, uh, or my joke is, is whenever you're, say you're self-employed, people assume two things. You're your own boss. You can work whenever you want. So you got all this time off and you're automatically rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I mean, I work a lot of hours and I'm not very rich. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like your business is very similar to mine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Um, so for you, I'm sure you guys know my past. You know, I, I started off in the excavating business, ended up in the custom home business. Uh, back in the excavating business now, at, at one time we had up to 20 employees, eh, 15 employees. Uh, accountant office help and then uh, I've managed uh, big jobs 300 something plus employees so I, I've I feel like I've kind of got a realm of the big and the medium and the small mm -hmm. and um, being a small business uh, I've had some unbelievably awesome employees I'm still good friends with a lot of them a lot of good guys but if they don't own the business they it's still not their business. Like mm -hmm. nobody's going to do it the way you do it or, right. or, or, or the way you think it needs to be done or give it the attention you, you do from start to finish. Yada, yada, yada. And it is, um, I've had the same struggle. I know, I know you just recently lost uh, two of your main guys. I mean, they're still alive. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, um, kind of like with the Corey and the Ned thing, I mean, they, they moved on to other things. I yeah, mean, we encourage yeah. everybody to better themselves. I had guys that leave that I wish they would have stayed, but I understand they had other opportunities. They had yeah. other ambitions. Yeah. You only live once. You got to go do what you need to do, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But this conversation is coming from the, the business owner side of stuff. In the construction industry, we got into this vicious cycle of we'd hire some good guys. They'd stay with us for two or three years. You'd finally get them trained up to where they can go do stuff on their own. Mm -hmm. Go run jobs. Go do what they want to do. You'd have to babysit them, making yep. you money. Uh, now they're making your money, but keep in mind they're paying back the investment of time and mistakes you paid for, yeah. which happy to do. Yeah. And then either they get burnout, they get another opportunity, or they want to change course. And about the time you got them where you want them, they're gone. Yeah. And I can't compete with the big Fortune 500 companies with retirement and benefits and yep. all this stuff. I mean, the, the, my, my biggest counteraction to that is, is being flexible with schedules, get them access to equipment whenever they may possibly need it within reason, and so on and so forth with that. But it's, um, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. It's a struggle. Yeah, for and, sure. Um, I mean, like you said, it's just a cycle, I think. Yeah, I saw it when I was in construction and building fences and stuff. As soon as you train one guy, he's he's like, oh, I can do this. He goes and gets his pickup truck and starts his own thing or whatever. But yeah, it's uh, and, and I guess in the construction world, the carpentry world, you know, a, a guy with five hundred or a thousand dollars worth of tools can go start a business and do yeah. something. Yeah. Um, in my world similar to your world um i guess you could get started off with three or four hundred thousand dollars but if you want to do it right you're getting a million dollar investment right mm -hmm. off the bat mm -hmm. um so i'm kind of curious to your approach to this a little bit you know i spent 10 years revolving door of employees and kind of the third or fourth turnover i was like listen this is just this is not working yeah we were building high-end houses 
we need high end help, right? You can't build a you can't build a right, high end house without right. high end people. And and I felt like our some of those would argue with me, but I feel like my pay was competitive. We had retirement, we had vacation, we just didn't have health insurance. We had company trucks, you know, I, I was doing everything I could to there was a lot of years my top four or five guys made more money than I did. Try to do everything I can to them. But at the end of the day, I had to have those guys to complete the job I bid or the job I promised. Yeah. Um, and whenever I got back in the excavating business, uh, I mean, I was like, listen, every job I take from here on out, I don't care if it takes me twice as long. I'm not taking a job I can't do myself if I had to. Yeah. Um, and I'm very, very fortunate now to have the guys I do, which are kind of a part-time misfit gang. But technically, <laughs> I am a one-man show. Yeah. I mean, I know on paper and, and legally I am, but in real life, I got a good team. Yeah behind me, but I still stay true to that. I, my, my excavating company could be seven times the size it is right now, but bigger is not better. I refuse to go there. Mm -hmm. I, I've kind of been there, done that, and uh, I want to stay in my comfort zone of where I want to be, and the very first thing somebody's going to comment is, well, look at all that revenue you're missing out on. I've been big. I'm making more money now than what I did Yeah, going that route. So that's my synopsis of it. Um, I would love to hear, I feel like you're in a different spot in the rotation of where I'm at. <laughs> you're like maybe two steps behind me, but I feel like we're, we're traveling the same path. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's just, uh, I don't know what to say as far as how to get, how to get into this, but. Um, Cause, you and I treat our employees very similar. They're more than employees, they're family. Exactly. I mean, I fully understand whenever I take somebody on, I'm responsible for making sure their family's fed. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I did with my guys is, um, you know, like the, the competitive pay and, uh, you know, always take care of them, see, make sure they had, we had work and stuff like that. And what, um, Sorry. No, you're fine. But one, one thing that I would do is I would take jobs to keep everybody busy. And I wouldn't sometimes not take, I don't know if I'm getting off track here, uh, but I would take jobs to to keep everybody busy, you know, keep payroll going, payments. Uh, we Fill in jobs. Fill in jobs, right. yeah. And I, I built my business. Just like today, if I had employees, I'd have them doing something random. Yeah, just to shop work or right, you know, something to, to keep them busy because yep. we're because we the weather's crappy today. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you got to keep um, you want to keep them forty hours a week. You want to keep them keep them busy. Keep make them sure busy. they're getting paid. They're providing for their family. You know, exactly. But one of the things that I did with building my business, I knew, like as I was building, as I was buying vehicles or trucks or machines or whatever. In the back of my mind, I built my business to where if I had to, I could do it all myself. Um, I probably wouldn't have told you that a couple years ago. It's just something I just kind of kept to myself and uh, like the semi that I have. If the economy gets so bad, brush cutting is not a need. Like right, right aways and stuff like that, you know, it's, it's a need. But you don't have to have your backyard cleared out. Exactly. So, you know, I, I have a truck and a trailer. I can go hot shot. I have a semi that I can go, um, I have a semi, I have a low boy, I have a step deck trailer that I can move steel or logs, or I have all these things that I can, that I can do um, by myself if I ever had to. And I built the business with that in the back of my mind. And I never thought I'd come to the point where, where I didn't have employees. And now that I don't have employees, <laughs> And don't, don't get me wrong, I could hire somebody if I wanted to. I'm at that point where I want to kick back and see what's out there. Coast and a little bit. Coast a little bit and just try to see um, with my guys. I didn't, I didn't fire them. It was just one of those things that they wanted, they, I wanted them to be happy and I wanted to be happy. You know, not my attitude and their attitudes weren't always the best. I'll confess that. I mean, we're human, you know. Um, nope. I mean, that Boston employee relationship or even employee employee relationship. I mean, sometimes we spend more time with these people than we do our spouses. Yeah, yeah, and our family. Yeah, yeah I mean, so it's. Um, <laughs> you got to be able to get along with them. Right. You know, that's one uh, thing me and Aaron talk about. I can't, 
I can't even come close to paying Aaron what he makes bowl making. Hmm. But we enjoy working together. Yeah. You know, and he he's in a better mood, I'm in a better mood, and um, that's worth something, right? Yeah. There, there's a value Absolutely. there. Absolutely, yeah. Enjoy coming into work, having fun. and Right. But, um, you know, that was just one of the things that, that I, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of struggling with words here, but, um, yeah, I just, I wanted them to be happy, and I, I wanted to try something different, and then, you know. Well, uh, you know, you kind of alluded to the point of where you could have employees now, but you want to kind of coast and yeah. let the dust settle. Um, I think we all get caught up in the rat race of <laughs> trying to please every customer, take every job, make every penny. There is a point where you have to do that business-wise. Right. Like early in business, you, you got to take that that terrible job, steep hill. In. But that's also what gets your name out there. Exactly. But, you know, I mean, coming up on 10 years of, of cut and brush now. You've, you've proved yourself. Yeah. And we've, we've built a reputation and... I can I can pull up on a job, pull in the driveway or wherever it is, and be like, I don't want to do this job. And either one, I can bid myself out of it, or if I do get it, it'll be absolutely worth it. Right, right, right. <laughs> and or I can just say I don't I don't have time for this. This is not up my alley. Thank you for your time, and I go. And I've done that several several times. You know, we used to cut a lot of retention bonds. There is good money to be made, to be made in retention ponds. But at the end of the day, if nobody's happy cutting a retention pond because you're getting eaten up by mosquitoes, there's snakes, there's bees, um, you're getting stuck, you know, end of the day, everybody's dog tired and nobody's happy. It's like, what is the point of this? Why am, right. why am I doing this? Forget it. Pass it along. You know, do what you, do what, what you enjoy and, and what makes you happy and, and your guys happy and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I but, mean, I, I couldn't agree with that more. It's kind of why... Um I went down the route I did. I, I didn't, I, I don't want to say I didn't enjoy building houses, but it's not what I was passionate about. You know, operating equipment and turning wrenches in the shop, build stuff from scratch. That's what I enjoy doing. If, and, I, and we kind of split our seasons up, you know, January, February, we spent a lot of time in the shop. We built mm -hmm. tile plows, we built Bubba, or Lieutenant Dan, or whatever you want to do. I know it's not done yet, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, it keeps me from getting burnt out, but it's, you know, five years ago, whenever I made the change, that was my big thing is I am done chasing everything. I want to do what I enjoy. Yeah. And it's been a long time since I woke up in the morning and not looked forward to going to work. Um, and then it's just a bonus being able to share it, share it with them. I mean, you're proud yeah. of what you do, right? So that's what YouTube allows you to do is, is share it off. with people and show <laughs> it off. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, look what we accomplished or look what we tackled or look how we solved this problem or look what we did. And, yeah. uh, not in a conceited way, but it's um, you're, you're proud of what you do. You yeah. know, which if you do a good job, you should be, right? Yeah. Uh, but the uh, man, the employee battle, it's um, uh, especially whenever those people become your friends and you care about them, and they're just on a number on the timesheet. Yeah. And you, uh, you're the same as me. You truly want what's best for them. Yeah, I and do. Sometimes what's best for them is not being with you or working for you and, mm -hmm. and moving on. And I, um, I had a boss, uh, whenever I was in high school, I had an opportunity to get a job on a construction crew, which sounds like a simple task today, but back then that was a job you competed for. Had yeah. an interview for it in the whole nine yards. And, um, <laughs> it's crazy. How I, I know <laughs> it's, I look back on it. And, um, so I worked for him for two summers. Went to college, went to work at a dealership, wasn't happy. He called me one day, offered me a good opportunity. Uh, knew I wanted to be out on my own. And I, I, he wanted me to promise him two years. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I did that. I think I ended up staying, uh, ended up staying close to, uh, ended up staying close to five years. And um, I, I gave him like, he knew what I was gonna do. I gave him like a six or eight month heads up. I'd love to have him on the podcast sometime, I might. And I'll be honest with you, I tried to leave the right way and tried to do everything the right. And I'm not going to sit here and say I was the best employee you ever had because I wasn't. Mm -hmm. but there was some stuff that if I worked for myself at the time and was doing that stuff, I'd probably be aggravated. But I, but I did give him an honest day's work and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. But uh, I kind of thought he was going to be more of a mentor than what he was whenever I went out on my own and he just kind of ghosted me a little bit. Hmm. I'm like, yeah, all right, let's see how this is going to be. 
Well, time comes back around and, and things like that. And, and honestly, I'd, he probably did me a, a good thing by not being my babysitter and holding my hand and let me figure it out on my own. Yeah. But fast forward today, uh, we did a big job for him last year. We're going to do a big job for him this year. Um, I still still have the utmost respect for him. I think he's got a lot of respect for what we've accomplished. And um, Is he still in construction? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys, the very first job we used Bubba Dump on, that was his house. Okay. And uh, super interesting guy. I mean, that's how I met Captain Cleveland. That's how I met Matt. We all worked for the same guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernie's his name. I'd love to get him on the podcast sometime and uh, and go there. I learned a lot. Traveled traveled the whole Midwest, three mile McDonald's as far wow. of all things. But uh, but you know, I guess just like any other relationship, that stuff evolves, right? Like you kind of go through phases and stages and and, yeah. and bernie's the classic you know he's been doing it for close to 40 years now he remodels kitchens and bathrooms and he's only got certain kitchens and bathrooms he does he knows he's good at it. he knows he makes money yeah. and that's what he wants to do yeah. he ain't gonna you know whenever i worked for him he had three full-time carpenters and about six helpers and we we're chasing everything he could get come across his desk he's down to two guys now focused in on what he's doing he's good at his craft yeah I know it's a completely different industry, but it's the same. It's the same thing. It's the same yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's that's kind of where I'm where I'm at. I I know what I I enjoy. I enjoy mulching, to a point. You know, I love I love. Uh, okay, so with mulching, the brush isn't green in the winter time, and you know you you, you don't you have downtime, some downtime. You know, stuff like that. So that's why I expanded into buying the excavator and dozer and stuff like that to help keep everybody busy. And, um, you know, with doing the dirt work on the side, you know, inner with, you get a job where there's some mulching and dirt work and dozer work. You know, I really, really enjoy that. That's, right. you know, I think if I had to sit on one machine all day long, every single day, I would, I would just be like, this is nuts. You know, this is crazy. I'm not doing this. Yeah. I, I mean, as much as I love running the dozer and the excavator, there's some days I just want to drive a haul truck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. It's like, yep. just uh, sign me up for something uh, something different. So I know we've talked about this a little bit. I uh, I think once you get down the road, I I don't want to downplay the fact that I got Jerry in my back pocket and, you know, Matt mm -hmm. and Aaron and Captain. I got some really good guys I can call on if yeah. I need. But I think once you get your little army build of some – key people mm -hmm. that can kind of come and go as needed and jump in. I, as at the end of the day, you got to enjoy what you're doing. Exactly. And you don't yep. want to take it home to your kids and your wife and your family and everybody because that's, yep. that gets, that gets contagious fast. You know, it does. The, it does. The bad attitude or oh, I shouldn't say bad attitude, just the, the, the vibe, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my wife's a school teacher and I know he's, I get on her all the time. She wants to come home and don't want to do anything if you had a bad day at work. I said, you're not at work no more. You're <laughs> home. That stuff stays there. Yeah, yeah. It's hard so, to do, though. It, it, is, it is hard to do. Yeah. It is hard to do. But she wants to tell me about her day, and then she wants to know about my day. I'm like, my day's over. Like, I don't want to go back and rehash any of that. <laughs> like, can we just talk about what's for supper? Yeah, you know? yeah. Not that I don't care, and I'm glad she's interested, but I've, I've, closed, that, I've closed that part of the uh, – close that part of the day so yeah but we'll uh, we are uh we'll wrap this up here i know you got to get back home and a lot of stuff going on but this should come out we got a big meet and greet yep we will both be uh guest of all though i'm excited about that Con it's, Expo. Uh, i have a feeling who everybody that's going to be there there's going to not going to be a lot of people over in my section for some reason <laughs> well you were involved with the big meet and greet we did up at uh with hyundai and, yeah and yeah there, and that, that was uh, successful yeah absolutely it's just there's a lot of big guys there <laughs> i'm the small man on the totem pole here for ah, sure clint's in it now i'll tell you that uh cnt clint, yeah. yeah okay uh, yeah so i don't want to uh, I don't, the official list hasn't been released yet, so I don't want to say a lot of the bigger names. Okay. Uh, we can, we'll say Let's Dig 18 will be there, Chris. Uh, you, uh, Clint from CNC Equipment, and myself are all for sures. Okay. That are locked in. Um, but uh, there is uh, Matt from Diesel Creek, I think we can say him too. But uh, stay tuned to John's social media, Facebook, Instagram. YouTube, yeah. Uh, my social media, any other channels you follow, 
Uh, Volvo's getting ready to start pumping out some advertising for um, all that stuff, which should be coming out uh, pretty soon. But yeah, it's going to be the Wednesday, which I think is the 15th? 14th, I think. 14th. Oh man. Uh -oh. oh man. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the uh um pretty sure look at us go. Fourteenth. It's the Fourth. Wednesday. Yeah, fourteenth. Ah, where'd it go? Fifteenth. March fifteenth. Fifteenth. Four uh, four o'clock. Not gonna say anything. Oh, there Probably it is. Right. Okay. You were right. You were right. 15th. Uh, I think it's actually going to start at 3.30 is going to be the official start time. I okay. I told you four, which I did was rubble on that. So uh, if you guys that are, was very much time when he said that the other day. Yeah. I think we'll have like an hour and a half there Okay. Uh, to do what we need to do. I'm sure some of us will get there early. So if you guys are in the area, I know I plan on getting to the booth early. Uh, we just had to have an official start time start time and it's the official start times at 3 30. uh so if you guys are in vegas con expo 2023 march 15th volvo booth festival 15th. grounds 15th gosh dang it 15th. no you said it right okay i didn't <laughs> um 15th uh festival grounds um yeah come come visit us we'll be there's 10 of us um which should be it should be a good time yeah should be I'm a really good time and there's uh there's some other very big uh, names that'll be uh, be there with us as yeah. well. So, but uh, well, man, I appreciate you uh, stopping by and yep, thanks for of, having uh, me. Filling us in on what John from Upstate Brush Control is all about. So, uh, you know, we'll, we might have to do a recap on this in three months. And like, <laughs> I went out and hired ten guys. You know, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll give know, it a couple months. I don't want to drag this on too much, but one thing, and correct me if I'm wrong, but one thing that allows you to do what you're doing, and, I, and I'm going to say the same thing you said, but I'm going to word it a little bit different as far as being able to go on your own and give yourself options, comes down to debt management. Oh, absolutely. It, yeah. you got to manage your overhead or manage yeah. your debt, and yeah. um, that's one thing I, I try really hard to do. I, I have very little debt. i got a whole lot of assets. So economy turns, this happens or whatever, and I see an opportunity where I can steer the ship this way and get through a rough patch. Yeah. Um, I can liquidate equipment, I can repurpose equipment, I can you know, do different things, mm -hmm. uh, run streamline without employees and the quality yep. of work. Um, and, I, and I think the key to making that uh, possible is, is, is debt and asset management, that balance Absolutely. sheet. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, and, and an employee, is an asset to some extent um whether that falls in or out but uh but yeah that's uh, a lot of people get in trouble with the um you know going out and buying the newest the shiniest the greatest and, yeah it's and, easy to do and then they're chasing a the payment yeah. you know you're out there running in the mud one day when you don't need to be out there running in the mud just to make enough money to make a payment yeah. instead of sitting here in the shop you know recording a podcast <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so, all right. Well, John, greatly appreciate it. Yep. Thanks Thank for coming you. down. Appreciate the inside. It's always nice to uh, catch up with a friend and, and see someone else's uh, opinion on a lot of different stuff. And hopefully, you have a safe trip back. And I will see you in Vegas. Soon. All right, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Do we do we pretend like we're talking? No, we don't have these? to pretend. It's just all for show. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's not even like that. Like, now don't be hurting yourself. All right, you ready? Yep. All right, John. <laughs> I, I want to go back to Idega 4, but I won't go there starting off. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Can we edit that out? Because <laughs> <No. laughs> I'm really curious. I missed that one. <laughs> the uh, uh, Idega 4, remember his uh, cameo video he did? With <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. John. John, John of State Brush Control. <laughs> All right. So, anyways. <laughs>